the greatest public speakers became great because they eventually found their voice. Not somebody else's voice, but their voice. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Have you ever sat in a room where somebody is speaking and it's so awkward or uncomfortable that you truly cannot wait to leave the room? Like you are going lower in your chair and you're trying to hide and maybe putting the hat. You just don't want to be seen and you're feeling sorry for the speaker. Why is that? Here's why. It's because a person is trying to speak like somebody else and they're not that person. They're not like the other person. The best way to give you the analogy that'll make sense to you is this. Think about music. How many different music genres are there, okay? Think about all the different music genres that we have. Now, I want you to visualize this. Take Tupac. Imagine Tupac singing country music. Can you see it? You can't see, I can't see it. Like imagine he all I need in life is sin is me. It just doesn't make any, it's just, it sounds, I can't even do it right now. All I need in this life, it's his song, right? Now take Blake, what's his last name, Shelton? Now imagine Blake Shelton, we ask him to sing hip hop. Can you see it? Can you truly see it? Can you see Blake Shelton singing hip hop? I can't see it because that's not his voice and that's not Tupac's voice and you need to find your voice. And when people ask me this most random question, Pat, I want to be a better public speaker, what can I do? Find your voice. Stop trying to be somebody else's voice. What does that even mean? So finally, instead of ask, answering hundreds of emails that I get on this, I just said I'm going to make a video again. Keep in mind, every single video I make, I make because of uh, the question that gets asked so many times, I eventually make a video about it. So let's get right into it. I got some points that I'll give you about speaking, 16 of them. But before getting into it, I first want to tell you multiple styles of public speakers. And you need to ask yourself, which one is you? And identify with that speaker, then go study speakers that have that style because that's your style, if that made any sense. So let's get right into it. First one is the mentor advisor. So who is the mentor advisor? This could be a Tony Robbins type of a speaker. When he speaks, he can't help himself but give you advice. He can't help himself but give you direction. He can't help himself but lead you, right? Tell you, here's what I would do. All, because that's their style. So mentor advisor, high, high energy. That's a Tony Robbins. If you got the charm and the humor, this could be a Ronald Reagan, when he would speak, I can't think of a time he spoke where he didn't have a joke to say. It was always humor, charm, smile. His pacing was slow. He wasn't the fast-talking guy. Tony Robbins can run laps around Ronald Reagan when it comes down to speaking because Tony can say 1,000 words in 30 seconds, and Reagan is just on number 68, for instance. Okay, I'm giving you an example here. So charm, humor, maybe a Ronald Reagan with a sense of humor. You may say, I have a great sense of humor. Use it. I, people have told me I'm charming. Use it. Go study Ronald Reagan. Somebody may say, well, I, I'm more like bold. You know, I just kind of want to tell people and tell them off. But I know what I'm talking about. Well, then that's Gary Vaynerchuk. He is extremely bold. He'll get up and curse the entire audience out. But he knows what he's talking about. So bold yet credible. Now, some people say, I don't like Gary's style. He's not talking to you. He's got his own style. But he's bold yet credible. Okay? Uh, some people don't like Reagan. I know people that say, I can't even listen to Tony Robbins' voice. I can't listen to Tony Robbins. He's not speaking to you. You're not the audience, okay? The next, locker room talk. You may say, you know what? I'm more like the locker room type of, type, type of guy. I like to sit down and tell people what they need to be doing. Great. You may study Mike Ditka. Mike Ditka was a locker room talk type of a guy. He sat there and told people, here's what you need to do. You need to get, and he was locker room fired everybody off, ticked them off, and then boom, they're ready to go to war. That's Mike Ditka. Go study Mike Ditka, coach of uh, Chicago Bears. A lot of people don't like him, but he did very well as a player and as a football coach. Another one may be commanding, firm, like a general-esque, like, you know, Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu from uh, Israel just recently gave a talk to uh, 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 United Nations, I believe. And he gave a talk that I recommend you listening to because he was... Firm, slow, bold, respected everybody, opened it up with respect to everybody, but he made his point. Commanding, firm, generalesque. That may be you. Many people don't like his style, but you may speak like that. You need to be true to your voice. The next one is crusade. You may be a crusader and nobody really understands. What do you mean you're a crusader? Why do you always talk about correcting an injustice? Maybe you need to study, you know, MLK, Billy Graham, Malcolm X. 
by the way, conflicting uh, beliefs, Malcolm X and MLK and Billy Graham, they're not the same beliefs, but they had a crusade. It was a cause, right? So, you know, that's the category I would be studying if that's your style of speaking. You may say, that's not me. Then keep continuing on the next people. Storyteller, imagination, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs does not speak like Ronald Reagan or speak like, you know, uh, 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 Tony Robbins or Gary or any of these other guys. But when Steve Jobs spoke, people listened because he was an incredible storyteller and he was an unbelievable guy at making you and I imagine things that weren't possible. Can you imagine if you and I, you know, the Walkman and all of a sudden he takes out the, you know, iPod. Oh my gosh, it's an iPod. Can you imagine having a computer within your hands and he takes out the iPad? Do you remember the first time you and I found out about iPad? Everybody wanted one. You remember the first time somebody had an iPod? How did you and I react? How many songs? 5,000 songs. That's like me having 5,000 CDs. Do you remember? Imagination. Can you imagine if you have an iPod, an iPod Touch, an iPad all together called the iPhone? Can, I mean, it's imagination. So maybe your gift is imagination. The other one is presence. What's presence? Oprah Winfrey. When she enters a room, presence entered. There's presence. So her speaking style may be presence. It may be curiosity. It may be questions that she does. But that's your style. Next one may be arrogant. You know what arrogant is? This is not who you want to be. This is somebody that acts like they know what they're talking about, yet everybody's thinking they're a fool. Kanye West. And there are many people like that out there. But he has a lot of people may say, Pot, he makes a lot of people follow him. That's great. A lot of people follow many different people for different reasons. If that's your style, where you want to convince people that you know what you're talking about, but you don't, that's a style. I just don't recommend that style. The next one is sales. Somebody that's an incredible salesman. Incredible salesman may be Warren Buffett. I mean, Warren Buffett can sell you. You can sit with Warren Buffett, and he can convince you to drink eight cans of Coke for the rest of your life, and you would do it. Starting tomorrow, you would say, hey, uh, uh, can we get a case of Coca-Cola? Because every day, Warren Buffett lives 88 years. I need to drink eight cans of Coke. And you would drink it because he is a salesman. He can't help himself but sell. Everywhere he goes, he sells. Geico, Cadillac dealerships, furniture. He just wants to sell. And he's a great salesman. If that's you, that's the style. Listen to Warren Buffett talk. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The next is seductive. Maybe you're the seductive type of speaker. Maybe you speak and you seduce people. Maybe you have your own charming, seductive way. Well, maybe you need to study JFK. You need to study Bill Clinton. They were some of the most seductive speakers of all time. Bill Clinton could give you a talk, look at you, and say something. You would say, I have no idea if he's telling the truth, but man, I believe him. It's like you're being, you know, what do you call that thing when people would uh, uh, hypnotize you? You're seduced. You're in a whole different land. That's a seductive speaker, right? Then you have the technical speaker. Very, very detailed technical. You know, like if you ask a, watch some of Elon Musk's talks, you'll see it's such a technical speech when he speaks. It's not very much, but it's all technical details that he gets into and a whole different style of speaking. Then you have inspirational. What's an inspirational speaker? Inspirational speaker could be Barack Obama. He is inspirational. He sells you the dream. Like, we are going somewhere because he's an inspirational speaker. And he doesn't do it with a million mile a minute. Very da 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 da. And da 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 da. And pa 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 pa. It's just music. The way he does it is just flowing when he does it. And he moves you. Right? Then we have philosophical. Philosophical could be who? That could be Phil Jackson. He makes you question things. You'll talk to Phil Jackson, and he'll make you question things. He says, uh, so, hey, Phil, why did you do it? And he says, why do you think I did that? And why do you think such and such did this, 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 this? And you're like, but I didn't ask you that question. But I want that answer. Then you give the answer. Oh. So it's the speaker that makes you constantly go what? Oh, now it makes sense. Philosophical speaker. Maybe that's you. Maybe you study Marcus Aurelius. Maybe you studied all the different religions, all the different faiths. Maybe you've studied every single philosophy from Stoicism to Cynicism to every one of them you've studied. So you're a philosophical type of guy. You like to question things. Great. That's your style. And then there's fear type of leaders. People put the fear into everybody and people perform. What's fear? Bobby Knight. Pat Riley. I mean, I can give you a list of names there. These are fear. Go study Bobby Knight. Go study Pat Riley. But Pat Riley was like a gangster, mafia type of a coach in the NBA, right? That's who he was. And people were just, they wanted to play for this guy because he just knew how to get people to get aligned, and then boom, 
We're going to beat the other guy. And people believed it, and they did. I think he's got five championships as a coach, and obviously he's got uh, three of them as a general manager president with, uh, what do you call it, with Miami. He's done a fantastic job, probably one of the best GMs. If it wasn't for him and Dwayne Wade, he's probably, LeBron James would probably not go to Miami. So, but that's his style. By the way, just so you know, many of you admire at least two or three of the people I just mentioned right now. But I am guarantee if I ask you right now, comment on the bottom and post the one you like the most out of everybody I said. I promise it's not all going to be the same. You'll see. Some of you guys are going to say, who is Netanyahu? But some of you guys are going to say, man, Netanyahu is amazing. Steve Jobs is my favorite. Mine is Barack Obama, but it's going to be different. It doesn't matter. It's your voice. What's your voice? Find your voice. And don't try to be anybody else when you're speaking. Now, there are some areas that you can figure out ways to become better tactfully or skill set. I'm going to do my best to try to give you some skill sets, but there's a whole technical side to speaking. How big is the stage? Do you walk? Is it a podium? Is the mic over here? Do you hold the mic? Is it a wireless mic? You know, the type of wireless mic is it tied here. Can you walk around? Do you need to make sure the speakers are on this side where you go? You don't make that sound. Woo, woo, that sound. You need to know your real estate. There are things that you need to know, but that's technical stuff. Forget about the technical stuff. Technical stuff happens after you've given thousands of talks. You'll realize about the different AV systems, lighting, where do you need to stand to be the lighting perfect in your face. That's purely technical. I'm giving you basic how-to. I'm not getting technical here. I'm giving you basic how-to when it comes on to speaking, and hopefully some of these things can help you out. Listen, for me... When I think about a great public speaker, this is my number one. Let me tell you what my number one is. If I can go and hear somebody speak, okay, whoever it is, any one of these guys, if I can go and hear somebody speak, and the entire time, uh, Michelangelo, are you still good with this if I cross my arms? Okay, the entire time when this person is speaking, if I go hear somebody speak, and I feel like the audience could have thousands of people in the room, but I feel like it's just me and this person speaking, that to me is a great speaker. If it's just you and I, that to me is a great speaker. If I get lost during his speech and I forget everybody else is in the room, I forget I'm watching a video, I forget I'm watching a movie, I'm watching, like for instance, when when Gladiator, when Gladius Maximus, Russell Crowe gives that one speech, no one exists, and you're just in the movie, you are there. Or when, you know, uh, uh, Braveheart, uh, uh, what's his name? Braveheart, uh, 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 William Wallace, Mel Gibson, gets up and he gives that one speech with the whole, you know, William Wallace. When he gives that speech, I mean, you watch that. No one exists, right? Or you hear Denzel Washington give a talk in John Q. My son is not going to, I'm not going to bury my son. My son's going to bury who? Me. You're lost. It's boom. It's one person, right? If a speaker knows how to do that, they all do it in their own separate ways. That to me is a great speaker. Okay? So if you can captivate me to the point where I think it's just you and I, as if you and I have a cup of coffee or we're having lunch and I'm simply listening to you speak, you've already won. You don't even need to watch the rest of the video. Turn off the video and skip to another video. You don't need to watch anything else. If you learn how to do that, the rest is over with. Okay? Rest is over with. Because all the other stuff you'll pick up by doing so many times of speaking, you'll get better at it. The next thing, number two. Number two to me is somebody that is very good at making their point by telling stories. Sometimes when I get asked to speak for three hours and they want to do Q&A, that's a different talk than it is from an hour uh, to just give a presentation than it is from, hey, can you give a 10-minute talk here, than a five-minute talk. If I'm asked to talk five minutes, on TV or on whatever it is that I'm speaking for five minutes, I'm t- I'm, here's a point, here's a story, done. Let me tell you about what's going on over here. Here's the conditions that we're looking at right now. Da, 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 da. Here's what I think we need to consider changing to, and here's what I believe will be the solution. Let me tell you why I believe this. I remember when it was 1992, and boom, story. Okay, story. So get into your story. When you wanted to make your point, tell stories. Somebody who is very good at making stories, and figuring out ways for me to take a metaphor or an analogy that I connect. Ah, that makes that makes sense. I get it. I got it. I respond to that, and most people respond to that as well. If you're telling your story, number three, make your case. So look at speaking as these three different points. Write these three different points down so you can kind of understand what I'm saying with this. First, state your facts. For instance, um, unemployment right now in America is 9.2 percent. It's not. I'm just making it up. Okay. Unemployment right now in America is 9.2%. Here's what I think we need to do. 
We need to get people going back to jobs by lowering the taxes, okay? Or we need to raise the taxes and tax the top 1% and make the pay the bottom, you know, 80%. That's what we need to do. And if we do this, I believe unemployment is going to go from 9.2% to 4.3%. Take that 3 format and go through it. State the facts. Make your argument why they should join you. State your facts. Make your argument why they should join you. Just follow that format. And by the way, practice this and with any case, any it doesn't matter what it is. Take anything, follow that three step, and you'll look what happened. Then you'll get judged based on how well you do in the middle. It's like, think about it. This is when you speak like that and you're an attorney, you're going to get judged based on the middle. Okay? By the way, this could happen with family as well. You're sitting there saying, listen, let's state the facts. Your grades... You're, at, you're scoring, like let's just say you're talking to your kid. Here's your grades. I'm seeing your grades. And, and let me explain to you what I think this is taking place. I think one of the reasons is because you're doing this, 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 this. And I think if you do this, here's what could happen. And you always wanted to play baseball for Pepperdine University because that's the way you want to go into Major League Baseball. This is your opportunity. So I think if you do this, here's a fact. We can get some scholarship. You can go play for Pepperdine and maybe one day play for the Major League Baseball. What do you say? What do you think about that? Three-step process, okay? Those three. State your facts, make your argument, and why should, why should they should join you if they do, what's going to happen, okay? So you're speaking like an attorney because you're making a case. Uh, next, next point number four is if you are a first-time speaker or you've only speaking a handful of times, typically things that will make you um, sound like you know what you're doing, you've done this a few times before, let's just say you've got three points you're making. To each point, add a quote to it. Winston Churchill once said, history will be kind to me for I intend to write it. I think we need to focus on writing our own history by writing out our goals and commitments on what we want to do. Okay, great. Okay. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, imagination is more important than knowledge was said by Einstein. I think sometimes we spend too much time on the facts and today we need to spend some time on our dreams. That's your point number two, dreams. But point, quote, point, quote, point, quote especially if you're newer. The more you speak, the more you read, the more quotes you have in your repertoire, they're going to come out just purely by you haven't done these talks so many times. So add a quote that'll make it a lot easier for you. Number five, connect with the audience. How do you connect with the audience? Look at them and make eye contact with them. Make eye contact with them and choose a handful of people that are engaged the most and make eye contact with them. Don't worry about the guy yawning. Don't even look at the person that's yawning. They're going to they're confuse you. Look at the person that is fully engaged and make eye contact. Keep going back. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Especially when you're newer. Make eye contact. And by the way, one thing you don't want to do is just stay on one person. A lot of times amateurs stay on one person. And that person's very uncomfortable and everybody else is saying, hey, do you want to talk to us as well? So you got to make sure you're dancing. See? This is a dance. Hey, dancing with everybody. Okay? Eye contact going everywhere. Um, next is... Um, you know, I said it already, don't try to sound like others. Pick your voice and stick to that voice on who you are. You can many times ask somebody on your style of speaking, and if you made a list of these, if you made a list of these, and you put them out there, someone's going to say, you know what, I see you more as this type, this type of a speaker. Great. Then take that and ask yourself which one you are, and work on that type of a speaking. But make sure you're staying true to your, to your own voice. Seven, preparation. Simple as that. Uh, when I first started speaking, initially, and I was very nervous about speaking, the first time I spoke, I spoke at a, um, I'll tell you exactly the first time I spoke, I spoke at a Denny's in Compton, okay? <laughs> Out of all the places, I spoke at a Denny's at Compton, and it was last minute, the speaker just asked me to come up, and I was not prepared to speak, I've never spoken in my life, I'm a military guy, but he asked me to come up, and I went up. And I couldn't wait to sit down. It was the worst talk I ever gave in my life. I was nervous like you wouldn't believe. And then from there, I started doing more of them. And then eventually, there was a system to it. But I realized, if I'm not a pro, because I haven't given thousands of talks in my life, I need to make sure I over-prepare. So I focused on preparation. Point, like the easiest way, sometimes people write to write their entire speech. That's okay. I don't recommend it because I don't listen when somebody writes their entire speech. So I'm telling you, as a listener... I will not listen to your speech if you just write the whole script and you're going through it. You're going to have a hard time gaining my attention if you're just, you know, people will do one of these things. They'll say, you know what, I'm so nervous, I'm just going to read my speech. Okay, so, uh, hi, um, thank you so much for giving me this time, Mr. Johnson. This is an honor to be, uh, you lost me already, I'm gone. 
So I suggest take a card, make five bullet points, and under each bullet point, make three points if you need to make it and add a story to it. So if you put Volkswagen story, and that you know what Volkswagen story is, get into it. You may put, you know, a you know, uh, uh, Hugo Boss story. This is a suit one time you had in a drift and you went on to an appointment and they laughed at you and you realized before they even laugh at you, we're going to tell them, I'm so sorry, when I was coming in, I hit the door and I cut my pants. So my apologies for these pants. I'll make sure I get a fix on the next time we meet together. Ha, ha, ha. Let's get into the meeting, for instance. But that's your story, okay? So the more prepared you are as a rookie, the better it is. Even as a veteran, but as a rookie, even more important. Okay, next. Um, eight, what is your outcome? What is truly your outcome of giving this talk? What is your ideal outcome of what you want to start seeing happen with this talk? What is the action item? What do you want them to take action with? Truly, is it to buy? Is it to register? Is it to sign up? Is it to subscribe? Is it to move? Is it to be somewhere else? Is it to attend another? So what is your outcome? What is truly your outcome of this talk you're given? Be very specific of your outcome and make sure you're staying true to your outcome. Sometimes you're giving so much and you're like, I'm giving, doing a, such a good job. And then you finish, you're like, I didn't even hit my outcome. What is your outcome? Go after your outcome. Okay, next. Um, know your audience. Very important to know who you're speaking to. So how old are they? Well, income. Where, do they, where are they from? Why are they there to hear you? Do they care to hear you? Do they like you? Do they even know who you are? You know, do they pay attention? Are they younger? If they're younger, how much of an attention span do they have? Uh, I've spoken in front of prisons. I've spoken in front of, you know, uh, people who just got out of prison. I've spoken in front of billionaires. I've spoken in front of millionaires. I've spoken in front of clergy. I've spoken in front of uh, atheism. I've spoken in front of a debate politically. So who is your audience that you're speaking to? Then you'll know how to make the adjustments based on the audience you're speaking to. Next, action items. Put your action items, similar to your outcome, but action items. My action items are first, I want to do this. Two, I want them to do that. Three, I would like them to do this. So at the end, give your action items. Point number one, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and do ta 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 Go to the website and register. Number two, I need you to send me an email right now. Take out your phones and send me an email and tell me what is the thing that you're going to be changing about yourself today, whatever it is. And three, the uh, pa pamphlet I have underneath you. When you're leaving, I need you to come to my booth. And when you're leaving, I need you to go and buy this book. Doesn't matter. Give your action items uh, when you're leaving, Okay. 11, typically it's good to come and meet the audience before, shake hands, greet, talk to people, let them get to know you, get to know them. There's some kind of a relationship going on, and when you're speaking from stage, you can typically identify one of the people you spoke to, and that helps you out a lot when you're speaking. Edify the venue and the inviter and the organization that brought you up. For instance, if you're speaking at someone, they ask you to speak, don't right off the bat go in you know, and say, hey, thank you so much for this. It's too, you know, you're too black and white. Get into it and break the ice and talk and then five minutes into it and say, hey, by the way, thank you for the invite. And then, but make sure you are recognizing the people that gave you that platform because without that platform, you won't have that platform in the audience you're speaking to. So that's that part. And then 13, disturb. You know, the greatest speakers I know, they know how to disturb and move people. These guys are big on disturbing. Great leaders are phenomenal at disturbing, getting people to move. You better believe crusade speakers are very much about disturbing. Um, you know, bold yet credible. They're all about disturbing. Locker room talk, they're about disturbing. Commanding, they're about disturbing. So figure out a way on how to disturb and make me move. So think about people that spoke to you. How do they make you move? You be that person to your audience. Uh, 14, challenge them. There's got to be a challenge. I have a challenge for you. Here's my challenge to you. My challenge to you is to do this, this, this. So there's got to be a challenge. They give it to everybody. The greatest talk ever you give without a challenge at the end is worthless. Just so you know. If I don't leave after hearing you speak and I don't take any action and I have any challenge that I need to be doing, your talk was a waste of time. Within an hour, I'm over it already. No one's talking about it. But you need to give me a challenge. The best type of speakers are the ones that I walk away saying, man, I feel like I'm not good enough. I got to improve on this. I got to do this. Challenge. I have a challenge that you need to improve. What is your challenge you're going to give to your audience? Then it's uh, 15, rehearse. Practice your talk, especially if you're newer, in front of other people. And last but not least, get your timing right. What is timing? When you put your story here. When do you disturb? When do you do this? And timing is a, sports is all about timing, okay? This is timing, okay? Football is timing. Golf is timing. This is a game of timing. Speaking is also timing. And by the way, with timing, timing is probably the last thing you're going to pick up because it's not going to come right off the bat. You won't get timing until you give 100, 200, 300 talks. So 
just something to be thinking about. And the more you give, you'll know what I mean by timing. You can comment on the bottom, and I'll do my best to get back at you with the comments. But timing comes later. That doesn't come early on. Those are some points I have for you. How many of them was it? Was it 16 points I got for you on how to become a better public speaker? But you may want to go back and look at these and pick and choose who it is and start studying that person's style of speaking and mainly focus on that person's style of speaking. Don't try to be somebody you're not, and you'll be amazed by the type of talks you'll eventually start giving. And by the way, keep this in mind. It helps to give a lot of talks. So this is one of the benefits of being an entrepreneur and being in sales. You have many different opportunities to give talks to your sales organization. Sometimes people who are involved in sales end up becoming great speakers because they have more opportunities to give talks than somebody who is not. So I highly recommend being involved in some type, some type of a sales organization, sales model, where you can constantly be doing this to see the reaction you're getting, the response you're getting from everybody else. So now, with that being said, I do not think we have the pillow here because Paul, actually, matter of fact, it's right here. Mike, if you can get this for us. Hey, um, you got any questions? Post them on the bottom. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do so. The subscribe pillow was here at Harvard, Boston, for the last three, four weeks. Paul literally just got back today, so make sure to subscribe. We have a very special episode that's coming in when we cross 100,000 fans that we're going to need your help. We're going to put a lot of you guys in the video, and I'll tell you how that's going to be, so stay tuned for the email that's going to go out and a video I'll post to tell you exactly what we're doing once we reach 100,000. I think right now we're at 97,000 subs or so. While you're watching this video, we may already cross 100,000 by the time some of you watch it. So again, subscribe, and please, if you think this is a video that's going to help some of your teammates, some of the other people that you may know in your business, in your company, be sure to share this video as well with everybody else. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.